Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Professor Sistrunk, and I'm reaching out to my Netty 115 students. So we just had a beautiful holiday. It was a beautiful day, and I really enjoyed myself, and I hope that you guys had a chance to get a little rest and enjoy yourself. But now it's time to move forward. So you're going to see me mix two chapters here today. You're going to see me talk about static routing, and you're going to see me talk about dynamic routing. And the reason I'm bunching these two together, because we are in the week of dynamic routing, and also we really didn't have a chance to talk about static routing with the class because the class didn't show up, which was okay. Some of you guys got it down. Y'all moving out. I'm looking at y'all work, and y'all hitting it. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to see all of your work graded. And if you have any questions, please just reach out to me. Don't be afraid. Reach out to me. You know my telephone number. You know you can text me. Priority as far as getting in contact with me is simply shoot me a text. And if we communicate on text, then we can go to the next level probably would be um, telephone call. Or we can go to a Zoom. But the email is the last thing because I have so many emails coming from so many different places. I want to give my students priority, and priority is texting me. So if you can do anything, text me. But if it's really important, call me. Don't, don't waste time texting me. Give me a call. So I'm going to mix two chapters together because they, they like a handshake. They go hand in hand. Stand. So then we're starting off with static routing, and we're going to move into dynamic routing. And I'm going to blend these two together because they really do work together. So check your grades in the morning or the next day or whenever you do, and make sure that you're on top of your work. Now, this week is critical because this is the week where I start dropping people from the course based on an activity in the course. If you haven't did anything, you're going to notice then I'm going to put you on a drop list, and they just simply going to remove you out of my, uh, off of my attendance. So just make sure you got your work in there. Another reason this week is important, because I'm under the assumption, I am assuming that everybody understand what they need to do. Now, if you don't understand exactly what you need to do, you need to reach out. There's no way around it. Now, some of you emailed me, and... For some odd reason, I shot you an email back. I haven't heard back. But if you feel you emailed me, remember the protocol for me at least. Call, text me, call me, Zoom with me, email with me. That's my protocol. Text, call, Zoom, email me. Emailing is last because I'm getting emails from everywhere. You can't imagine how many people bombard me with emails. If it's not the college, it's other people in the company. It's all type of people emailing me. So that tends to be the last resort. And since I know I got a, a, a quite a few hours before I email, I tend to put that on the back burner. So your best thing is to text me if you're a student. Now, if you someone I'm working with, they know how to get in contact with me really quick, really fast. But as a student, text me call me, zoom in with me, then email me. Okay, let me get a drink of water. With that being said, hopefully if you're having any problems, you highly intelligent enough to say, let me get, it, get with my professor really, really quick. Now, what you're going to notice is this week, everything that needs to be graded for the past two weeks will be graded. So look for that. Okay, static routing. Now, these are going to be short chapters because we done already talked about static routing and dynamic routing is really just a short chapter. It, it, one of the things I want you to take away, don't get caught up. You know, a student asked me a question about what's the difference between subnetworks, uh, uh, this and that networks. And, you know, the theory is really hard to comprehend sometimes because you don't actually do it. What you want to do is know the commands. I stress that. Know the commands. Know how to put in a static route. Know how to put in a dynamic route. Know how to put a stub network in. 
you may not be able to walk into a, a networking department and believe me if they if you walk in there and say hey i can explain stuff networks people gonna get away from you but i understand that's part of the learning process you want to get that foundation down but what impresses me is when a person can set up a dynamic route when a person could implement a static route that what really impresses me and that's why we start with implementing static routes now the main purpose of routing just routing in itself is for a router to take your information and route send it to another location that's the main purpose. Whether you use a static route, dynamic route, sub routes, this route, that route, that's the main purpose. The two primary, primary routing formats is static route and default routes, which is the same thing. A default route is a static route. It just depends on where it's at. And then dynamic route. So these are the two primary, static and dynamic. A router learns about remote networks in two ways. You manually put it in or you dynamically set it up where it learns from each other. If you look over here, this is a dynamic route. And in a dynamic route, they learn from each other. This router sends this router its routing table. This router sends this router its routing table. Boom, there it is, it's done, it's over with. They automatically know what's going on. Now, if we put a third router in there, that third router will send to both of these routers and they will know. These, this router, R1, will connect to R3 and say, hey, if it was R3 here, I know you don't see it, it will say, hey, what's your table look like? R3 uh, will say, this is my table. I got you and R2 on my table. That's dynamic routing. That's the perfect thing, but it has drawbacks too. Static routing is just simply saying, hey, I have put an IP address on here, which is could be the, the default gateway, set it up on here, and you have your, and then I have to tell this router what my route is. So I have to go over here and put my routing on, I mean, my IP address on this router. So they both talking to each other. They, not like dynamic, with dynamic just constantly talking back and forth. These two are not consistently talking back and forth, communicating. So the drawbacks, we talked about this. The drawbacks for a static route is increase, increases the network size. So the bigger it gets, the more complicated static routing will get. Whereas dynamic route generally independent of network size, meaning no matter how big you get, <laughs> no matter how big the network becomes, it will learn from each other. So there's no conflict with that. A min when it comes to static route, a real drawback is that administrative intervention required, meaning that you have to go and troubleshoot it. You have to make sure you watch over it. You have to set it up, blah, 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 blah. Whereas with automatic, <laughs> automatically learns from each other. So that's pretty much, and we're not going to go to scaling security and all that. Okay, it says less secure, but you got to take that with a grain of salt because we have other devices on there that gives us security. So that's a, 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 a with a grain of salt, less secure. But also notice this when it says use a CP in memory. The, the routers are getting so dynamic now that that shouldn't even be in the question no more. Uh, uses more CP, memory, and bandwidth. Come on, it's getting dynamic. Yeah, it's consistently talking, but if you see the new routers out there, back in the day, you can argue that, that you're constantly using this device in a dynamic setup and it's taxing the system. But today, man, they're getting so dynamic. It's unbelievable. Moving right along. So when to use a static route, like I said to my students, when it's a smaller network, when routing, when routing to and from a sub network, it, this is a stub network right here. And don't, compli don't complicate it. All a stub network means is 
One way in, one way out. Done. It's over with. One way in, one way out. So when you talk about sub network or stub network, that's what you're talking about. Okay. One way in, one way out, and that's it. So, and we, tr we really don't want to set it up like that in the industry. Now you won't have this because you have multiple ways in. But will we consistently use static routes? Yeah, we still will use static routes, but we don't want to set that up. You know, I mean, why would you just want to waste a router for one way in and one way out? This thing may cost upwards to $10,000. No, I know it may not cost that much, but it costs money. Trust and believe that. So static routes to connect to a specific network, specific network, connect to a stub route and summarize routing tables entries, meaning you put your routing tables in there. Blah, blah, blah. We get it. We get it. Okay. Now, R2 configured with a static route to reach the sub route. Like I said, I'm going to move on from that because that's, that's a debate that uh, I have with some of my colleagues. Like, man, I bet not ever catch something like that in our, in our network. Just drinking a little water, talking a lot. Okay. So you got a default static route, and you recognize your default static route by 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 with a slash 0 and uh, creates a gateway of last resorts. Like I said, moving past the stub network because we really don't want to focus our attention on that because you're never going to really see that out there unless it's a real small shop. And remember, static routes was in itself. Is really built for small shops anyway. Small shop. So we got the summary of a static route, and there it is right there. Destination networks must be continuous, uh, multiple static routes, etc. 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 Moving forward. Floating static routes. Now, this is unique. This is it's not really a specialized thing, but it, you always want to have a router sitting out there that is really protective. That would really, if you if your network should have any problems, you can actually reroute things really quick. Uh, static routes that use are used to prevent a bag of path when used when primary routes is not available. So it just understand floating static routes in a nutshell. If whenever you have a problem on your network. A router is sitting out there that can take the load and move it forward. You know, you hear a lot about load balancing and all that. Even with routers, we have to have something sitting out there that will really protect our network just in case we run into uh, particular problems. Okay, moving forward. Configuring static route and default routes. Now, this is what I need you to really grasp, to put your mind around. How do I configure this? How do I build this up? And here is your syntax. Learn your syntax and you got it. IP route, network address, subnet, submass, subnetwork mass, IP address, and your exit. So learn this because this is so important in understanding routing. And as you can see on this next slide, they have it built out right here. Um, they have the show commands to show how the routes look. You're going to see in here uh, a lot of setup on your show commands because the show commands is really important for you drilling down to figure out what's going on with your router. It says in this example, each router only has entries for directly connected routes. A directly connected route is what is the next hop as a static as I'm when I'm creating my static routes. I want to put my next hop in there. In other words, where would that router send information? What's the next logical place for it to send it? And you see it laid out here for these three routers here. If it's this router right here, the next hop, logic it is that it can't jump over here because it has no connection, it's there. If it's this router, then it depends on what path you have put in your router table for it to take. If you want to go to that network, of course, the next hop is here. If you want to go to this network, the next hop is here. You wouldn't send it here when you want it to go over here because that would be foolish. Anyway, and if it's here, the next hop is that. So what is the next hop in this configuration? 
So it talks about the next hop, and I'm gonna let you go through the details of what next hop I dress route uh, exit interface and all that. You know, if you look at the syntax, you'll see how that's laid out. Configuring the next hop, as you can see right here, IP route 192.16.1.255.255.255. My next hop is 172.16.2.2. And all you have to do is follow the path. Boom, boom, that is. I'm saying that is like I'm making music or something. Anyway, moving forward, just follow the path, the next hop. If it's this router, you know the next hop gonna be either this or this, depending on what network you wanna go. And remember, you got three separate networks right here. So you're gonna go here or this way. Okay, so configuring a direct connected static route. Right here, you got configured the uh, directly connected static routes for R1, and it breaks down as directly connected. Now, when it says directly connected, it's talking about that particular port. If you look right here, IP route 172.16.1.0 is on, that's that network, that's zero, 255.255, but it's coming out of this port here, uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 right here. It's coming out of that port. Then it's going to 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 0 into that port so the, the net directly connected means i'm sending it to a specific place that's it i wanted to go to a specific place i'm directly connected to that router okay moving forward oh and let's talk about cisco just a little bit okay so we know cisco express forwarding default behavior on ios 12 or, or later uh, provide optimal uplook so Cisco forwarding, and I think I told a few guys, is one of the best methods that's out there for Cisco routers. Just remember, we own Cisco routers. Moving forward. Verifying a static route. Show, show, show. Your show commands. I know a lot of you get tired of me talking about, oh, Professor, oh, we talking about use your show commands. You want to verify what's going on with your network. So if I say show IP route static, begin gateway i want to see what's on that particular router i want to see how it's set up and you can see it right there so your show commands show ip route 192.6168.2.1 i want to see what's going on with my router your show commands are your first line of troubleshooting and if you don't if you're not getting that by me saying it so much god god help us all anyway moving forward okay so IP route one, uh, so now we doing, it says a default static route. Now default static routes are commonly used when connecting an edge router to a service provider. Now remember, an edge route to a service route. I mean a service provider. You know who the service provider is, so you're gonna put that default route 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 in to go straight to the service provider. That's your default route. Yo, gateway, baby. Excuse me for saying that. I don't know where that came from. I'm bored. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward. Gotta have a little fun. Um, configure a default static route. So there your default static route is. What you're saying is this. I'm going from my default route into 172.16.2.2. Going into that route. It says any package not matching route entries are forwarded to... 172.16.2. So what they really saying is this: if packets come into your network and they have no place in there to be, they forward it out of your network in that 172.16.2.2. Why we do that? Because we don't want to drop packets. It, the packet could be on could be a packet that's used for our network, but we need to get it up out of there and send it on its way. Send it to the proper place. And that's our default route right there. Show IP route static, indicate static route. Uh, candidate default uh, route indicated by who? So, I mean, here you're just showing how you can just make sure you maintain looking up your static routes to see what's directly connected and stuff like that. 
moving forward. Okay, we got a packet trace in here, and you guys had a chance to do that. We probably got quite a few of them in here. Uh, IPv6, the same thing, and I explained this to students before, IP, before, IPv6 is the same way when it comes to looking at um, IPv4, the same thing. Only thing is you're going to put v6 in there instead of uh, 4. And pay attention. If you learn your syntax, configuring this would be simple and easy. You got IPv6, Uticast routing. You know, like I told the students in the classroom, this will already be set up. Mainly, you'll be troubleshooting to see if there's any issues. So you'll say R1 can ping R2, and you'll put in the IP address, but cannot ping R3, and you want to know why it cannot go to that. Well, is it the next hop? Okay, so if I go to 2, it makes it. Why can I go to 3? Three? 3 is not the next hop. I have to go to 2 first. Okay. Okay, so this is just a continuance of that moving forward. Okay, configuring next hop static IP routes. As you can see, doing IPv6 static routes. The reason I don't spend so much on IPv6 is not that it's important, it's extremely important. But once you go to IB, IV, IPv4, you pretty much understand IPv6. I sometimes can't understand why a student can't grasp IPv6 configuration when he can un he or she can grasp IPv4. Only thing you is that the the I the IP address isn't the issue. The IP address you shouldn't be focusing on. You should be focusing on the configuration and understanding that because right now in this stage you're gonna be given every IP address you need to use. I'm not, in your first book, you were told, hey, you need to know how to write IP addresses. And if you notice in that first book, they just showed you how to take a IPv6 IP address and shorten it. They didn't have you configuring <laughs> IP addresses or writing IP addresses for IPv6. Now, IPv4, yeah, we had you do a little search. And on the certification, I can promise you this, all they're going to ask you is, what is which is a true IPv6 IP address? So all you have to do is understand that. But now configuring an IPv4 and an IPv6, it's the same setup. Setup. All you're doing is putting v6 in the same setup, and of course an IPv6 address. But you get my point. I hope you do. Okay, show commands too. Moving forward, this is basically the same stuff. Okay, now we come into an IPv6 static route moving forward. And I think this is pretty much it when it comes to this here. And my next session, I'm going to talk about IP, I'm going to talk about uh, dynamic routing. Now, here go what they say floating static routes. So, floating static routes have an administrative distance greater than the dynamic routing protocol. Or other routing, other static routes. And the administrative distance is based on, like I told students, based on what routing protocol you will be using. Let me let me put make this absolutely clear. The routing protocol that you will be doing for, for uh, CCNA version 7 will only be this here. It will be OSPL. And the reason we getting you focus on OSPL because that's the routing protocol that's king and that's out there. OSPL. Yes, there are other routing protocols out there. ISIS is out there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, protocols are out there, but the main one for in in house or in businesses is OSPL. If you can understand what I'm saying, if you need clarity on that, talk to me about it because. We want to make sure you understand that that's king. All that Eager and uh, RIG, whatever, P, whatever. I mean, it's, it's dead now. And, and I'm glad Cisco has stopped focusing on that. Okay, so we got floating, troubleshooting, floating IP address. Automatically install host routes. Uh, it says automatically install when IP addresses is configured, configured as a static host. We done went through this over and over again. It's the same thing 
as you can see, they implemented a server in here. And basically, the server can actually issue out IP addresses. Uh, so we want to make sure that. But more on, when you're doing static routing, you're actually putting it on the router yourself. Okay, moving forward. Okay, and we're at the end of the slide. Now, at the end of this slide, we talk about ping. We talk about trace route. We talk about show IP route. We talk about show IP interface brief. And we talk about show C. CDP networks detail. Now, I know some of you are going to ask me, well, Professor, what's up with C CDP? Remember out there, CDP is dangerous. We want to segment our network before we run that on there because we open up to a lot of stuff, uh, nasty little situations that can get us in trouble. So make sure you, if you're working in an apartment, which I know you won't have the power to do it anyway, but make sure when you learn that you be very careful with that. Okay, so that's it with what we just went through. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, talk to me. I know this Monday class we didn't get a chance to meet because of a holiday, and I'm just gonna keep posting my um my sessions because I want you to get this. Some students ask me for the PowerPoint, some will actually put this PowerPoint up there too. With that being said, this is Professor Sistro. I hope you enjoyed this little light session on static route even though we do with the chapter i want to just roll it out now i can roll into dynamic routing